bring you more updates uh, perhaps in the course of this program. Now let's return to Abuja where the Minister of Defence, Mohamed Badaru, and his Deputy Minister, Abilo Matawale, say all efforts must be geared toward achieving peace and security in Nigeria. This is just as their counterparts in the Ministry of Police Affairs also stressed the need to live up to their billing. Sifone Sien has more in this report. One after the other, the Minister of Defence and the Minister of State for Defence take to the saluting dice during the Guard of Honour welcoming them to the Ministry. Assuming office at a time of mounting security challenges, the ministers understand the task before them are enormous. We will do our best. We will do our best to make sure we rid the country from security challenges. All our jobs are at stake if we don't deliver. Beyond this, reforms are ongoing to remodel the ministry after the U.S. Pentagon. We must address the root cause of conflict, promote social cohesion and foster economic development by investing in education, health care, job creation and infrastructures. Elsewhere, it's a similar ceremony. The Minister of Police Affairs and the Minister of State assume office. I grew up in the civil service up to the permanent secretary level. The emerging challenges and the evolving challenges around internal security. So I'd just like to pledge our commitment. His Excellency carefully selected who he thought would help drive this agenda for him. And I feel it's an honor for me to serve alongside His Excellency. Just like their counterparts in the Ministry of Defense, they will have to confront security challenges head on. C4 ACN, TVC News, Abuja. I'm joined now by Member House of Representatives um, representing Year One North, Imekoafon, Federal Constituency of Ogun State, Goiga Isiaka, who joins me via Zoom from Abuja. And also joining me is an anti corruption activist and chairman, Connected Development. Uh, Hamzat Lawal, he joins us live from Liberia. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us on the program. We now have about 10 new and modified ministries with 45 ministers. Honorable lawmaker, what do you make of the current system and its ability to deliver your party's renewed hope mandate? Well, thank you very much, um, viewers at home and uh, Nigerians generally. Well, I, I think it's, um, it's, very, it's pretty much in, uh, in order. Um, I mean, the, it's, one is in line with the provision of the constitution that says that um, all the states of the federation must be represented at the federal cabinet. Um, I think secondly, it's also, um, you know, says about the, um, um, the interest um, and the track record of, the, of Mr. President um, in, in putting together uh, a cabinet of people with capacity and, uh, you know, people with knowledge and with experience. Um, within that cabinet, I mean, the 45 that have been, you know, sworn in are people that are with very experience and knowledge. Uh, and, that, and that has been, uh, you know, um, demonstrated when they went for the screening and also since they assumed office uh, about 48 hours or so ago, uh, we've had the standbys coming out from them, uh, you know, that basically, you know, says that, um, you know, they have to hit the ground running. So I have no doubt in my mind that this team is going to work with Mr. President um, to deliver the, you know, the, you know, the renewed hope that, um, that this administration is, is going to, you know, to pursue. So just to, to answer your question, um, I, I think um, it, is, it is pretty much in order. And right. I have no doubt in my mind that this team will be able to deliver uh, with the Mr. President. Mr. Lawal, some have criticized the size of the president's cabinet. They think it's bloated uh, with 45 ministers. U.S., they say, has just about 15 departments, and there are about 24 ministerial departments in the U.K. What do you make of this development? Well, first, we must uh, ensure that when we lead, we lead based on the rule of law that sets precedence. And it's clear that the Constitution has said that we must ensure that the Cabinet has a representation 
of the 36 states and the FCT. Uh, be as it may, even if Mr. President have that much number, that does not mean that uh, it would cost taxpayers money much more. He could have less number and then increase their income and wages, which could put a burden on taxpayers. I think what is important is how they deliver effectively, how they're able to coordinate uh, their responses and implementing Mr. President's agenda, which he has promised the Nigerian people. Uh, but this is a democracy. People are allowed to always disagree with decisions by their leader. But I think what's important is not about just disagreeing. It's about ensuring that this in, is informed by data. It's in the principle of uh, the tenets of democracy guided by the rule of law. All right, let me get back to the Honorable because um, you seem quite convinced and optimistic about uh, this set of ministers delivering. It, however, looks like the same template and structure since 1999. What have you identif uh, identified to be different this time? Well, number one, the leadership is different, and that also makes a lot of a lot of um, you know difference in in the result. Um, the templates of the leadership, you know, is different. And when when you also see the way the ministries have been put together, I mean, we begin to see some new names, some new you know nomenclature in the in the in the you know in the ministries. Um, you know, blue economy, for instance. Innovation being, you know, being stressed. Um, um, what's that one again? Poverty and humanitarian, and 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 you know, and all that. And, you know, and all that. that you know, goes to say that certain things are important, and those things are going to be, you know, giving a lot of, um, you know, a lot of. And then we also see the way the, the you know, the the the, 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 the economy, the uh, the minister of uh, finance. And who is also the coordinating um, uh, minister for the economy? I mean, it was just you know few uh, up till two three, two, two, three days ago, the special advisor on monetary policy. One of the things that this um, you know the, the the president mentioned during the inauguration speech was that the physical policy and the monetary policy must handshake, and that has come out even from what we see today, where when the um, um, at the at the money, the uh, the FAC meeting, right. where the you know the, where the minister stressed it clearly that um, we have to wash the money supply in the economy um, because of inflation. I mean that is now a situation now where you know we have to make sure that these two areas you know handshake you know fairly well, and 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 and, 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 and that is it. And also uh, the soundbites that come from the ministers. Um, I, I mean, the, for instance, the power minister, when he was talking, he was talking about the fact that we have to leverage on the Electricity Act that was just passed. Um, also, environment, talking about research. We have to make sure that, you know, we, we, we base everything that we do on research. I think what I've been hearing from the ministers, the Minister for, the, for Education, for instance, said something about, look, at the end of the day, after all said and done, it is the edu education that we're able to give that okay. drives the, the way the country is going to go. So I, I think that this ambassador gives me confidence and the fact that we have a president that is determined, you know, to make a major change. I guess in time, we will now watch to see if they're able to match words with the action. Mr. Lawa, quickly, let us look at the issue of integrity that has characterized, uh, you know, the life and times of previous ministers. Section 149 of the Constitution, for instance, requires that ministers declare their assets and liabilities prior to assuming office. A particular former minister has just recently been charged in the UK for alleged offenses from almost 10 years ago. How do we follow the money this time and make these people accountable? I think first, they must lead by example and declare their assets um, as cabinet minister. And I think this must be charged by President Bola Ahmed Tunubu because this would now allow the Nigerian people to see that the government is actually um, working to fight corruption, but also leading by showing transparency and accountability. I also think that it's important for them to shape the global perception about Nigeria and Nigeria's leadership, and most importantly, how it's going to be business unusual and that how we would in, uh, attract foreign direct investment. It's important to note that there are critical meetings that would happen in September. And this would be President Tenebu's first 
international meeting with heads of state and heads of government in New York. That's the United Nations General Assembly. This is something that the Minister of Foreign Affairs, for instance, would lead. A fine, uh, a fine diplomat who has led uh, Nigeria and represented Nigeria in the global scene. So, again, this would go a long way as we curb illicit financial flow, uh, anti-corruption, and ensuring that you know, we're able to mobilize citizens to hold government to account. All right, let's bring you an update um, very quickly on one of the ministers. Just two days after assuming office as minister of the FCT, Ian Sowiki has now revealed plans by the Federal Capital Territory Authority to restart the Abuja Rail Mass Transit. Uh, speaking after an assessment of the rail terminal, the Honorable Minister disclosed that the rail mass transit system will be completed and commissioned in a few months as it's instrumental to... Uh, reducing traffic congestion in the city. He also revealed that funds for the rehabilitation and start of the rail system has been made available as he assures that projects of this nature wouldn't be abandoned. All eyes on Wiki Honorable. Some have um, you know, mentioned him to be perhaps one of the potential stars on the cabinet. How easy will it come for a former governor? On the light you note, know, some said he probably has gotten a third time and that he's coming with a lot of political baggage. Honorable. Well, um, one thing is that you can, you can accuse or criticize Governor Wiki for so many things. But what I think we, have, we all agree is that in terms of, you know, um, working very hard and, you know, pushing very hard and ensuring that he pursues the goal that he set, I, I think um, that is one thing to appear to me that the whole nation agrees he has done quite, quite, quite well, and uh, I, I think that uh, if he's able to do that in the, in, in River State for eight years um, consecutively, and not to the last day of an of an eight-year administration, I, I I am fully convinced that he will be able to do that, you know, you know, very well, very well here. Yeah. Um, of course, some you know some people can say that he probably has more. I mean, the way there is the assembly that probably have a little bit of, you know, insight and control over Indeed. much more than the national assembly. But I think at the end of the day, what is important is your vision. What is important is your drive. He has demonstrated it over the time, even when he was the minister of education, you know, under, um, um, I mean, in, in the presidency, he, he, he has demonstrated it. That's right. I think that we, you know, Abuja will see much more progress. What I hear people say is that the last time we saw something near what we will be seeing during this time, but it was probably done in a Governor Erufai, former Governor Erufai. And I, I think that um, we will be able to see a better federal capital territory. Well, that runs we're along, looking forward to it. The man himself says he's ready to step on toes to achieve you know, his assignment. Uh, before we go, we have just a few more minutes, Mr. Lawal. There's an active lobbying online for the Ministry of Youth. Um, Abubakar Momo, who was initially appointed, is 60 years old, and stakeholders within the APC have now written to Mr. President asking for a young representative. Uh, how important is that to this ministry, particularly, you know, at this critical time in our nation's history? Future elections and how they mobilized and supported the emergence of President Bola Ahmed Tunubu. And it's important that uh, as President Tunubu believes in the vision, the leadership, and contribution of young people, a young person should lead that ministry. Someone with capacity, with track record, and someone who would bridge that gap between politics and governance and carrying every young person along. I think right, right now it's really critical. And I support that call for a young person to lead, uh, lead the Ministry of Youth. Gentlemen, thank you for joining the conversation this evening. I've been speaking with Boiga Isiaka, who is member House of Representatives representing Yewa North in Mekwa Four Federal Constituency of Ogun State, and also Hamzat Lawal, who is an anti-corruption activist and chairman Connected Development. Thank you for sharing your thoughts with us on the first 100 days. Thank you very much. And thank you for having us. That's our program today. You can watch a repeat broadcast at midnight and at 6 a.m. tomorrow. Remember to follow us on our social media handles using the hashtag first 100 days. I'm Lee Femi Okuto. See you again at the top of the hour.